Hauska? Huh? Hauska? Hey, how we up, doing? Buddy? How are you, man? Lindsay, how we doing? Good to see you. Jones. What's up, Jones? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. I gave Jones a hot dog way back. So I love it. I love it. So, of course. Appreciate you, buddy. Love y'all. Good to see you. Welcome to Tackling Brain Health with Karen and Napoleon. Today our guest is Steve Hauschka, Super Bowl winner. Um, we call him Super Steve. Uh, Steve is my neighbor. How, how we came to know him was um, a universal accident. I believe there are no accidents in the universe. I dropped off a plant at Steve's house as I do with all my neighbors who move um, to our street. He opened the door and said, I'm so bummed my wife Lindsay's not here, um, but I'll give her the plant. Where do you live? I live right across the street. I point to my house. I say, hey, welcome. Like, if you need anything, if you need a groomer for your dogs, if you need a babysitter for your kids, I'm here. And he's, he runs down the street, I gave him my card. He runs down the street and says like, hey, what's neurologics? And, and I was like, this is not what this is about at all. Like I'm just dropping off a plant, you're my neighbor. And, and then he, he says, um, can I ask you a question? Do you know anything about, about the local high school football team? I say, absolutely. Both my boys played, yeah, why? He goes, I'm a big fan of the game and I would like to be of service. And he does not say, I'm, I'm a Super Bowl winner, I played for the NFL, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> um, none of that. Like, he was so humble and I did not know who he was in the world for six months. When one of our board members at Neurologics texted or called me and said, hey, um, I heard an NFL player moved on your street. And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure not. And he goes, yeah, hello, moron, it's Hauschka. And, and I go, Steve Hauschka? And it was like, like it didn't register because by then I knew Steve as a, as a great dad and a wonderful neighbor and I'd met his wife and he'd become part of the fabric of our community and I didn't know who he was in the world at all. And so um, in the course of that, we started talking and dialoguing and, um, and ended up going to the Super Bowl with him last year. And the three of us were together at the Super Bowl. It was in Phoenix. There are no hotels in Phoenix whenever the Super Bowl is there. Okay. And so we, we'd rented VRBOs. And Steve and Napoleon were in one, the athlete house, and I was in the corporate house. My husband James bummed out of his mind and said, why can't I be in the athlete house? Um, <laughs> and my answer was, because I'm corporate. <laughs> so Super Steve got the moniker Super Steve through just who he is in the world, kindness. Um, we were leaving a big event at the stadium and there was a distressed school bus driver driving a public school bus filled with school children. I don't notice this. I'm up either driving the car up front, having a conversation. Next thing you know, Steve is jumping out of a rolling SUV because he notices that the school children are in danger and that the school bus drivers are preparing to wrap the bus around a light pole as she's exiting the stadium. So Steve leaps out of the car, car rolling, and then starts directing traffic like a, a skilled traffic cop. It <laughs> um, was like, from that point forward, he was. We had been calling him Super Bowl Steve to, up to that point, talking about his Super Bowl win with the Seahawks, talking about the other time he went to the Super Bowl and, and didn't have that same result. And we shortened Super Bowl Steve to Super Steve, just based on like who you are in the world. Um, so so thank awesome. you for, thank for you. all of that. <laughs> Napoleon, you can say what your thoughts were. You probably weren't so sure about Steve as he shim was shimmying up the tree to pick grapefruit or sleeping Yeah, Steve's a different kind of guy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the, some of the things I can I remember, I, I don't really want to say. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, those are things that were private amongst the house. They're in the tree of trust. Steve, Steve and Napoleon are in the tree of trust at the Adley house. Okay, I love it. I won't say it either, then, at least not on this, not on this one. Um, so I think it'd be helpful for people to know sort of how you fit in as it comes to like player brain health, your own brain health, how you how you came to be an advocate and, and sort of join forces with us in, in looking at this as both a player health benefit and and looking at even even as a dad and sort of where are you in the world with kind of current events and things like that. Yeah, well thank you. Thank you for the introduction and um, you know 
so so thankful to be part of this company. You're you know you're an amazing amazing founder, and um, you know I really believe in the mission of of this company, and um, you know the the game of football. Um, you know I feel blessed to have played it. Uh, I, I started with soccer and lacrosse, and and found myself. Um, kind of, I ran out of steam and wasn't fast enough to keep playing soccer. And so as a sophomore in college, I started playing football. And um, at the time I was at, also studying neuroscience at Middlebury. And, um, That's I've, not an accident either. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm around small, healthcare with a degree in neuroscience, but it's across the street from me. That's not an accident. Right. So I'm, I'm all of a sudden find myself in this, in this new sport um, as a sophomore in college. I'm 19 years old and, um, you know it, the culture of it being in a in a locker room with seventy guys is completely different than anything I'd experienced playing soccer and lacrosse. And there's so much to learn from from this game of football. And I was fortunate to play uh, for four years of college and then play um, in in the NFL for a while and experience um, so many different amazing things and. Uh, you know, it really, I, I view it like this, I like grabbed hold of this rocket ship that was football and I took it as far as I could and it really shaped my experience in, in my life and um, how I interacted with people and, um, you know, how I was able to support my family and all these things. So I feel so thankful to the game for that. And, um, you know, it's something that I feel passionate about is that every every child has something like that that they can grab hold of and um, you know, learn about the world, learn about themselves, and really um, try to be their their best at it. And um, the game of football, you know, is is under threat in a lot of ways. Um, obviously, the you know the contact is is like no other sport that exists out there. Um, it's part of what makes the game so special and, and so intense and so exciting. It's why it's the number one sport in our country. Um, but at the same time, the, the risks of playing that uh, are real. And um, so, how do you feel? How do you feel as a dad? How do you feel about we? We are both California residents, and you know, just today, there's discussion about banning contact football, um, tackle football for kids under 12. How, how, what's your view on that? I've been pretty outspoken from the neuroscientific perspective, just in terms of putting eight-year-olds in, in a situation where they're banging heads at eight, just from a pruning and neuroscience perspective, um, I, I have said prun pruning in the data is pretty clear, just in terms of if you bang your head after age 13, it's better than if you bang your head at eight um, yeah. in, in second pruning. What do you guys think about that? Like, let's have that conversation. We all love the game. Um, we all want NFL sports and and tackle football to continue. I'm a, both my boys play. People ask me why in the world would you let your kids play tackle football and like you're saying, because they love it. They love it more than any other sport. My son could play any sport he wanted to play. I introduced him to a lot of less concussive sports and ultimately he said like, I want to play football. And like you said, that's the rocket ship. For him, it's it's a high school rocket ship. Yeah. But how, I mean, how do you guys feel about that? People not playing they're they're banning tackle football for people who who are under twelve. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a it's a really interesting thing. Um, you know, I haven't. I, I have a few thoughts. First off, you know, rules are put in place to protect people, right? right. Um, who who can't make the decisions for themselves or maybe there's not enough information out there for people to make proper decisions or maybe there's too much pressure for these these families and these kids to start the game of tackle football so i understand why this is a topic of conversation and i appreciate that we live in a country where people bring things up like this to try to protect protect everyone um and i also see the other side of it which is this is a skill, a skill sport. And, um, you know, in my time playing with this, the Seahawks, there was a coach there, Rocky Seto, who was like the tackling expert. And he would, he studied film of football and rugby actually. 
and was super interested in how the sport of rugby was able to like wrap guys up and, and kind of roll with them um, and, and take the head out of the game and still have effective tackles. And that was something that was eye-opening to me because when you look at the development of a skill, the skill of football and one of the main skills is tackling, if you don't start that until age 12 or 13 or something like that, when a kid is more strong and physically, act, you know, a stronger stature, they're going to be more likely to not be as good at the skill of tackling and then also use their head more because they have a stronger neck and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So a younger eight, 10 year old kid, if, if they're taught proper tackling, tackling technique, mm -hmm. um, you could make an argument that a, a, they'll learn to tackle the legs, wrap up, roll, take their head out of the game, and then be safer in the long run because they have that skill of doing, of doing that ingrained in their, in their memory, in their muscle memory from when they're older. What do you think about it? Well, I have girls, so... <laughs> 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 that's the defensive machine. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I well, get it. You know what, I, 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 I guess I... Boy, in, in our lifetime, you know, um, it, it's... A, there's flag football now. Yeah. So there's ways to do things without actually uh, using, leading with your head to tackle somebody. Um, and I just remember when I was a little kid, I wanted to play football so bad. And yeah. I think our culture uh, just, you know, we celebrate the football games 100%. where the family all gets together and um, you know, if your kid plays, you know, everybody's watching the football game yeah. and your kid feels so special when they're playing it. And, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, that was a great tackle. You know, you're so tough. Are you ran over that guy? You know, you feel, you know, that uh, testosterone starts to yes. grow. Um, and so... How old were you when you put pads on? Oh boy. You know what? It's, it's funny that, I mean... I wanted to put pads on before I was big enough to play, and um, they. My first position in football was water boy, because I was too small, and the coach didn't want me to go out there and play. So um, that's I, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So um, and um, but I I just uh, I can go either way. I I think that. Uh, playing at an older age, uh, maybe you learn how to tackle differently. Um, you know, people learn things. I, I don't I don't think it's, um, boy, I, I just look at the, the NFL when I started. I mean, it was a vicious okay. game. Well, yeah, uh, you have one of the most it's, famous on-field injuries in history. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and the reason that you are so regularly Googled is I mean, just in conversation, I'll say, I don't even have to say your last name. Do you know Napoleon? And, you know, people who've been to the Naval Academy or watch NFL football say, oh, yeah, I know Napoleon. We all do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. and you shared with me that you were three days away from amputation of your leg yeah. and came back from that. So, I mean, your resilience and your mental yeah. toughness to get through that, yeah. um, I don't know if you've told that story. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it was tough. I mean, it, it's just some of the things that happen in football. But I, I I'll just say that, uh, like even w women's soccer. I mean, there are concussions all you the time. You coach yeah. And um, who I've played heard, women's who've soccer? Played and, and you coach them. And I've coached them, and they there are times when someone you know goes up to hit a ball, or both girls are going up to hit a ball, and they hit each other, and they're kind of semi knocked out so um, you know that's why your company's so important because there's going to be a need I right. mean even if we um, and I agree with you um, you know the science of it you know wait till you're older it's a argument for me it's not yeah. about 
I love the game. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll say that a million times. I love what the game does for children. I love what the game does for families. That's right. a great point. Right. I mean, Steve would say, hey, football is the only sport that has a day of the week. We have multiple days of the week in my house. I mean, <laughs> right, if we're not watching football, yeah. I mean, one of our board members, same, your, your buddy at Navy, I go, hey, Alex, did you watch the game? We're traveling somewhere. He goes, I watch all the games. And I go, what? He goes, all of them. I tape them all. Like, oh, wow. all the college games, all the NFL yeah, games. Yeah. Right? Like, we love the game. I, I don't want to say football should not exist. I want to be perfectly clear. Right. Football for kids is absolutely wonderful. Football yeah. for families is absolutely wonderful. For seven years, I've been saying, like, please don't let kids bang their heads until they are 13 years old. Yeah. I've been saying that. And at first college coaches heads reared back when I'd be in the room with them and thought that was the most provocative statement ever. Yeah. And over the last seven years, the data has just been so clear that yeah. get them through second pruning. Uh, even even you know NFL um, executives have said, okay, Karen, I could agree with you, except for quarterbacks and cornerbacks. What do you guys think about that? Like it being position specific, meaning you're speaking to like, you could go either way, but is it position specific? I don't think it's position uh, specific. I, 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 all sports are going to, going to get hit. I mean, yeah. because you don't yeah. know what the other person's doing. You know, um, they say, you know, keep your head up or you can't uh, hit with the point of your head. Um, but you don't know what the other guy, if you're tackling somebody, you don't know if, how they're going to lower their head yeah, or yeah. where their head's going to be. I mean, everything happens so fast yeah. in football. Um, so I, I'm fine with putting on in delays. You know, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fine, very fine with putting in delays because then everyone's going to learn how to tackle, you know, the right way. I mean, the, the pro some, sometimes I, I just feel the problem with tackling at a younger age is, is that the coaches don't know how to teach yeah. tackling. Yeah. That's a good point. I think the main point here is <coughs> coaching tackling. Yeah. Proper tackling technique, and it's one of the main, needs to be an emphasis. Right, right. With football. And, the, and you make this great point, like, because I had um, a roommate at, at the Naval Academy who did rugby. And I'm thinking, he's the craziest guy in the world. I mean, why in the world would you play tackle without a helmet on? You know, but you make this great point. It's like they know how to roll and how to tackle where they, they don't, you know, try to hit with their head. In football, we're just the opposite. We're trying to hit with our head. Right. The yards don't matter, though, in that game. Yeah. That's the issue. Because yeah. in a lot of the collisions in football, you know, it's, it's over Every that inch. Last, it's over that inch. <laughs> It's over that edge, yeah, which yeah. is, you know, it's a tough part of the game. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just a, amazing. I, um, with my daughters, I know that I probably, well, I, I talk about what I know. So I'm going through taking my daughters to a soccer camp. Right. And these Italian soccer players are, uh, they fly them in to coach the girls and everything. And so they learn a different perspective about uh, soccer. And um, I go in there, I'm, you know, kind of big. So uh, <laughs> That's an these, these professional soccer players, that they, uh, the, uh, the guy who's running the program, he says, oh, he played, he played football in the NFL. And they look over at me, oh, yeah, you know, you're big in there. And it's just, um, it's like, man, it's like you guys, the training you go through, it's just amazing. It's like like now in soccer, we're having um, uh, football coaches train us, you know, yeah. just on the athleticism, yeah. how, you know, the, the, I mean, football is so intricate. And so, you know, to be able to, you know, coach tackling, you know, it's, it's just very, very important. What about so. you, Steve? You played both sports, right? I mean... You're from a small child. You played soccer, and then you pivoted to football. It's an your story is an incredible story. I mean, just in terms again resilience, and I think you said to me once, I never got picked for anything, or I never got, you know, I didn't, I didn't recruited. get drafted, I never got recruited for anything, and I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Say that. Yeah. T tell people about that. And now so he's I, wearing, and now, and and now, now he's wearing, wearing a Super Bowl, Bowl ring. ring. <laughs> 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 right. 
Yeah, I, I um, just a persistent, persistent kid. I just was always trying to get better and, and find a way to um, improve. I, I found like one of my skills was finding ways to get better at something. You know, whether it was a camp or a coach or a certain technique, you know, as I got into my NFL career, it turned into more physical and mental training type stuff. But um, early on, it was, I just, I just loved playing sports. <laughs> I just couldn't get enough of it. And so um, when soccer looked like it was going to be coming to an end or not looking as bright, I was like, I'm going to try football. <laughs> And so it, um, That's you know, amazing it, in it's and of lucky. Itself to, no, it's I mean, lucky in a lot on. of ways. I I put a lot of work into it, but um, it's lucky in a lot of ways. There were several times when it could have been over um, before. You know, I almost didn't get a chance to go play Division One at NC State. It could have been over easily there, but just um, yeah, the the two sports are so different. But people who don't know you don't know that you didn't play at a D1 school. So people yeah. who don't know you explain the trajectory. So as a sophomore, you decide, I think I'll try football. And, yeah, so... And where are you and what school is that? Basically, I, I went to Middlebury as a freshman, was going to play, was, wanted to play soccer. That was my dream. I got there and um, I got on campus and I realized that the the, the varsity soccer team had been there for three weeks already. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I was playing soccer here. Uh, you know, getting a good chance. And so I was, I got to play with the JV team, but that was on a totally separate side of the campus, uh, not involved at all. Yeah. And so I kind of saw the writing on the wall there. I thought maybe I could get an opportunity to play for the varsity team eventually if I really like developed as a player. And, um, but my roommates were football players and they needed a kicker and I'd always wanted to do it. Oh. And so I said, why not? Let's try it. So I just, just kind of happened. And there was this awesome kicking coach, Steve Wolf, who drove up from Rutland, Vermont and taught me all the basics because I didn't know anything about where to take my steps. How'd you get that guy? How'd you the, get the head coach brought him in. Okay. Um, coach Ritter brought him in and so I learned everything from him. He taught me everything about it. At 19. At 19. Yeah. yeah. Put on my first pads at 19. So you had to have had, like, this guy's got some potential. I mean, you kick the ball. I mean, yeah, you smash was, the ball, yeah. Yeah, you smash yeah. the ball. And it's not like, now I got to get him the techniques to get the ball through the uprights. Right. And like I kicking a soccer ball to kick, the technique of kicking a soccer ball to kicking a football, I'd say it's maybe a thirty percent technical difference, um, but it, it it's re it's re it's real it though, yeah. and it right. takes anywhere from six months to a, a couple of years to develop that, depending on who's helping you. Yeah, and then there's a a, a whole other mental skill that you need to learn about performing under pressure, and uh, the the closest analogy is penalty shots in soccer, but there's oh, yeah. really only a few opportunities of that. And yeah. so the soccer players really, it's part of the game, but there's very rarely that many penalty shots. So they don't have, like every field goal kick is like a penalty yeah. shot. And uh, you know, I, uh, just uh, like my daughters, uh, they had, my one daughter had to kick a penalty shot like in this championship game. And just the pressure, pressure of that and like everybody's going up everybody's yeah. looking at you i mean that's how you go like every game you've got to kick a bunch of every every kicks yeah. and everybody's looking at you like you're you're either the hero or the goat you yeah. know yeah. as just uh it's amazing the pressure that is on you guys as kickers yeah. every game so well that's why they call yeah. you specialists right? <laughs> yeah specialists yeah. you learn to I, I handled it by just like, you know, there's there's all these thoughts that can go through your mind, right? The, yeah. You know, you can think about what happens if it doesn't go well or all the, you know, what's gonna happen if I, if this, you know, or all the potential things that could go wrong. You know, those, 
or you can even feel nervous and like excited in your body. You know, your body's kind of amped right, up, right. got butterflies. Those are all things that are kind of going on. But like, I think the, the most successful guys, they just focus on what it is that they need to do yeah. to, to make a good kick. Yeah. And they, they're able to do that while feeling all that stuff. And, you know, sometimes you, you know, most of the time you get into a state where you're just kind of real confident and relaxed and calm. That's kind of the goal. Yeah. Um, but there's other times when you're a total mess and you can still make <laughs> kicks, you know? <laughs> and so that's where, you know, and, and Justin Tucker talks about that. He talks uh -huh. about how, you know, there's times when his body feels excited, yeah. you know, and he's still able to do it. Yeah. So. I, yeah, you guys, you guys are amazing. Cause I, I'm just like, uh, I would be thinking about I gotta make this cause it, it's the game. Everybody's counting on me. I mean, it was just yeah, it just so the much pressure. pressure. The singular pressure and the focus. Singular not pressure. not team focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's interesting because you guys are on opposite sides of the of the ball, right? So, yeah. So meaning like you're a specialist and you're a guy who took a ton of hits, and so. Yeah for the same reason, you both looked into like, hey, I wanna know where I am in terms of like, what is my brain health and where am I? What's the assessment of where where is my function at this point in time? And I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing, but you have very different pictures of what your brains look like, which makes perfect sense. But at the same time, it's sort of like, why was it important for you to know? Yeah, well, one of the, um, I have a lot of teammates that I'm, I'm close with from, my playing days, um, and we're we did, we're just up in Seattle for our ten year Super Bowl anniversary back in Congratulations. thank you back in September, and it was it was like no time had passed uh, just to connect with all the guys on the yeah. team, and it was it was amazing. It was um, and sometimes you forget about the the bonds that you form with with your teammates. Yeah, and I'm. The things that they had to do to support their families and to do their jobs, and some of them got way more attention, way more rewards. Some of them got less. Some of them, you know, some of them might have been on that team for one year, and that was all that that was the best part of their career, mm -hmm. and they don't really have much to show for it other than that. Other guys are, you know, brand name guys that you've heard of. They had this. They had to endure some stuff that I didn't have to. Um, and I- You're talking about hits, you're talking yeah, about- Yeah, I'm talking brain. about, I'm talking about that. And, you know, we were all on the same team together, all trying to accomplish the same goal. And that was part of their job that they had to do that. And I, you know, I feel, I feel a responsibility to try to help not only my my teammates that I have a bond with, but all the all the people in the game of football who are who are also enduring these types of hits, um, you know, because there's a lot of life after football, 100%. and and um, I see these guys' families. I see, you know, and I, I care about them. And I, you know, the the it's not just it's not it's not just it's not and it's not just functioning yeah. too. We're not just talking about functioning. We're talking about like thriving after the game of football. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you're using your brain. you're one of the best in the world at something. You have all these skills, gifts, attributes that you can share with the world. And you know, to get your brain back functioning the way it should be, there's there's solutions for that. They need to know about it. And so yeah. that's that's why I'm here. That's why I'm involved with this company because I I'm super passionate about that. Yeah. I think we share that, you know, we've all, I mean, that's one of the things the three of us are aligned, like three sides of a triangle. Um, I am not an NFL player, so for me getting to meet all of you and, and learn your stories and hear about not only, you know, the glory days of playing, but what happens after you play and, and everyone remembers their last game. And I mean, that's one of the things you and I have talked about over breakfast, but Everybody remembers like where they were when it's over, how you knew, how you felt after it's over, and you're so right. There's a whole lifetime of using your brain that comes after the game of football. I've become passionate about it, the players, the practice squad players, the stories that, as I have met all of you, I've become you know 
Jordan calls me the football mama, I, I do feel like the mama of the players that desperately, desperately need to have a fully functioning brain for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I admire you, Steve, because your own brain scan, I mean, you didn't take a lot of hits and you have high cognitive reserve. And I hope you're okay with me saying that. I mean, you're a super smart guy with a degree in neuroscience who's getting a master's degree. And you, you know, you're not doing this for yourself. Um, Napoleon and I have brains that look very similar to each other. Even though I didn't play NFL football, we both had deficits. And so just in terms of, you know, I, I admire you because you're an advocate and it's not your personal situation. You're doing this on behalf of someone else where even in our origin story, like how we connect is around, hey, we both struggled and we both had deficits. And, you know, we wouldn't be sitting here talking if I wasn't vulnerable and, and said like, hey, look, I've got traumatic brain injury, right? You don't. So, I mean, the, the fact that you are and have become so passionate over kind of just the last year um, is amazing. I, part of it is um, my, my dad and my uncle um, are both, both scientists and mm -hmm. researchers and um, and you're being modest, wasn't, wasn't your dad at Harvard? Yeah, yeah. He's a, and my uncle's at UW, he's um, taught at the Harvard Med School. But, Again, uh, super Steve uh, sometimes uh, gets like <laughs> KOB to be his rah-rah because, yeah, my dad was a scientist, like, okay, at Harvard, yeah, little yeah. school called Harvard, yeah. I would have never thought about that <laughs> after being in the room with you. Uh, <laughs> that's terrible, that's terrible. <laughs> that's Jimmy has the great <laughs> Making crap cocktails from grapefruit at the VRBO. Um. The um, and I, I'm a big supporter of research, and I love everything that it's about. Um, we need to continue to learn. The brain is just like outer space right now. Um, the furthest reaches of the universe. Yeah. Uh, there's so much to learn. Yeah. About the brain right now and. NIH says that. Did you take yeah. that straight from NIH? I don't know, but yeah. they just... It's an awesome um, story. <laughs> the brain is the complex, most complex organ in the universe, NIH. Um, it's not as difficult as we might think, and you've been fired up about learning the science of this, and that's been so interesting. Again, no universal accident. Like You have a degree in neuroscience. You're fascinated by the science. Our company is a very rich in science company, um, and we have, you know, at the top of the food chain in terms of, you know, Dr. Hack's commitment and scientific chops and five medical board certifications and 800 million in brain health research at the government level. I've watched you immerse yourself in that with fascination. Is that part of what drew you, like, the yeah. science too? And your advocacy for others because you're humble and, and you care about people. That's, that's what I would say about you. I think I'm just, I'm fascinated too with, um, you know, it's the most important thing that we all have yeah. is our own brain. Yeah. It's the thing, it's one of the things in the universe we know the least about. Yeah. Um, there are solutions to improve our brains, how they function, not just from deficits from traumatic brain injury and stuff like that, but also from uh, just to improve our brain's performance just in general. Yeah. You know, from a peak performance From a peak performance perspective, I think all of us, we don't even know what we're operating with until we improve our brains. And so... And a lot of people don't know you, that they can get it back if they had it once. Yeah. Which is our story. So I think, you know, there's, there's just so many applications of the science to, a, to an actual solution that can help people in their daily lives, help people um, playing sports, help people um, in business. And, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by that. I love, as, as a player, I loved all the different recovery tools, all the different training tools for mental and physical performance. You know, I was big into like, I don't like the term, but biohacking type stuff, just uh, hyperbaric, hyperbaric chambers, red light, infrared, cold yeah. tub, um, all these different tools. I do Pilates. Um, He's got two Pilates found, reformers in his garage. Uh, foundation, <laughs> foundation training, I train on machines, I do all these. I, I love that stuff. I love feeling good. And 
there's there's more there for the brain. Nothing really, you know, most of the mental training stuff that I I ever did was, you know, just basically trying to be aware of my thoughts, meditate, do breathing and stuff to be aware of my thoughts, and then strategically, a lot of what I did as a kicker was to convince myself and to get myself in the in the proper state to go play in a game, to basically be so focused on what I was doing that none of the pressure, none of the other stuff mattered. Yeah. So back to what I was saying. So the the from the biohacking and the performance world and just all the training world, if you give your body the right stimulus, it'll it will respond and you'll feel better. And you know, there's there's growth that occurs there too. And the brain is no different. If you give it the proper stimulus, you're going to form new neural connections. The neuroplasticity of the brain is amazing and something that I'm fascinated about. And um, to accelerate that and to to improve the way your brain functions in areas that you didn't even know you could access is, is fascinating to me. And I think it's something that everyone should have an opportunity to do. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love your advocacy on behalf of players. Um, I, I think that's... I've been so impressed with your advocacy at the NFLPA level, um, advocating for players like you you mentioned who may not be as fortunate, who may not have the resources or ability to pay for something like this. I've been so impressed with that, Steve. Um, I would like to talk about your viral. Are you <laughs> yeah. good with that? Yeah, sure. That was a surprise. Yeah, sure. Again, you're such a humble guy. Like it, it's what was that like for you to suddenly, like very recently, have this viral moment where everybody's talking about you and and your your moment it's circulating all over social media i got it from my son and when i texted it to you i said you may have already seen this and my son's like hey mom like everyone in the world has seen that so how did that well it it was totally unexpected um i was at the bill bills football game and you know just down on the sideline there before the game and was saying hi to some some friends and colleagues from the past and and Josh Allen came running over and I, I didn't think anything of it. My son, my six year old son is like, um, more into cars and trucks and, and bugs right now. And like, sure. doesn't even, he like remembers Josh cause he gave him a hot dog a long time ago oh, wow. as a little kid. Adorable. Um, but that's the only, that's how he knows Josh uh-huh. is cause he gave him a hot dog at like a holiday party. <laughs> um, so, and he probably uh, doesn't even connect the dots. Your son doesn't connect the dots that you played for the Bills. And he he does. He's starting to. Bit, he's he's starting like to get it, interested like, oh. in it because his friends at school say stuff about it. But he doesn't. He's in um, he's kind six. of a little different world. Yeah. So then a few days later, the um, you know it starts to blow up. Sports Center um, shows this clip, and then Sports Illustrated, and that's in the Bills, and it's all over the place. And the thing about a viral moment is you have zero control yeah. over what's happening. Absolutely. It's out there, wow. you know, and like they're editing it, they're splicing it to make it look better and, and whatever. And I, I think it's an amazing story. Josh is such a, such a uh, incredible guy and full of heart. And we had a connection there um, when I was playing and still, still stay in touch. And he's just... He's one of those guys who remembers everything. He's like remembers movie quotes. He remembers like oh, wow. he's super bright. That's why he's so good at uh, football. He remembers exactly where all his teammates are going to be during a play. So um, naturally, he remembered my son and, and wife's name. And you know, we're you know we're it. It's a, just an, um, around the holidays. I I at first I didn't understand why it went viral. I was like, and you said that to me. I really, no, I, I really it. didn't. I didn't get it. And then I it's realized, it, I realized it's like you know, two teammates catching up and like the love there and um, the excitement and um, you know just highlighting what a great, great guy he is too. You know, as as one of the faces of the NFL, it was a, it's a cool story. Yeah, it cool. is. It is a cool story. The humanity of football is something that I've grown really to love. I mean, sports has become such a joyful part of my life. It's totally different for me as a clinical person to be with you traveling and to be with you at at games and in meetings with NFL executives. And 
PA executives, it's been incredible. Um, last 30 seconds, I would like to know like what your thoughts are, and maybe you haven't even thought about it, about putting your boys in, your two boys, in tackle football before they're 12. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, and I I don't think I have an answer for you today. I'd, I'd have to see how they grow and develop and how, how much they really want to play the game. And once we get there and if and if there's solutions to you know the you know the risks of, of the game and if um, the benefits like I talked about the rocket ship you know the benefits of the sport of football are, are numerous I mean I agree. it's it's community it's um, family it's family it's it's um, teaches you so much about life and and yeah. grit and resilience and toughness and Discipline. Physical, yeah. physical training, discipline, maybe maybe more than a lot of other sports, and I'm so thankful for that. And so it's really, but they're gonna have to want it, and they'd have to win an argument against against me if I if I feel like it's not the right thing for them. But yeah, um, would you be a coach? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the sport. I mean, I think everybody gets to make make their own decision at some point. Yeah. But it is it is tricky with young kids though. Cause yeah. How the do data. you? Um, There's you know, data. We know what it is now. And you know, are at what point are they allowed to make their own decision? Yeah. 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 Great. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody, yeah. um, for tackling brain health with KOB and Napoleon. My friends call me KOB, and these are my friends. So <laughs> thanks a lot for spending your time with all of us. Follow us, and we hope to see you soon.